Hello everybody and welcome to the Thursday edition of Video Clips. Um, statin drugs are commonly prescribed to lower plasma cholesterol and most patients think that because their cholesterol is lower, their health status is going to be better. The risks of heart attack, stroke, and death, for example, are significantly reduced. But the efficacy of statin drugs remains very low, reducing the risk of cardiovascular events and death by less than 2%. Nonetheless, the drugs are big sellers. Do you know 25% of all Americans take statin drugs? This is amazing. Well, a new study shows that the drugs are even more useless for elderly people. A research group examined data for adults over 65 from the All Hat study, which was published in 2002. Pravacol was the drug used, 40 milligrams a day, and the study group included over 2,800 ambulatory adults with hypertension and high cholesterol, but without atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease at the start of the study. The primary outcome measured was all-cause mortality. Secondary outcomes included cause-specific mortality and coronary heart disease events. Researchers concluded that giving elderly adults who have hypertension and high cholesterol pravastatin for primary prevention provided no benefit and did cause an increase in all-cause mortality for adults who are 75 years of age or older. Now, this is actually tied in with a much bigger issue, which is the overtreatment of elderly people in the United States. Now, just to give you an idea of what we're talking about, the highest rate of multiple health conditions in the elderly is in the U.S. We are the best in the world at this. 68% of elderly Americans have several health issues, such as high blood pressure, heart disease, diabetes, lung disease, mental health issues, cancer, joint pain, and arthritis. Now, if you add a few more conditions in, like high cholesterol, allergies, asthma, migraine, vision problems, blindness, and a few others, the rate goes to 80%. And this is the highest incidence of elderly people with multiple health conditions in the entire world on the entire planet, okay? Thus, older adults in the United States are more likely to take multiple medications. About 53% of Americans over age 65 take more, four or more prescription drugs. Many take five or more. And the number of people who are age 65 or older who take five or more drugs is increasing. Research shows that over 15% of older Americans are at high risk of drug-drug reactions as a, as a um, interactions, I should say, as a direct result of the increase in prescribed drugs in this population. Now, over-medicating is a problem in all populations, but it is more prevalent in the elderly, and it results in more adverse reactions, impaired or worsening health, loss of cognitive function, falls in injuries and hospitalizations. So there are a couple of things that we need to do to solve this problem, and the first one is doctors have got to be educated to stop prescribing so much. I mean, I don't know how else to say it. We are just seeing too many people going from doctor to doctor, getting drug after drug. Everybody specializes in a body part. Everybody's dispensing a drug. And that's how we end up in this situation. And, and some people are starting to call it medical elderly abuse. And that's a pretty strong term, but I have to say I agree with it. Um, the second thing is to start teaching doctors how to withdraw patients from these drugs when they are clearly over-medicated. Now, Barbara Farrell is a pharmacist, assistant professor in the Department of Family Medicine at the University of Ottawa, Canada, and co-founder of the Canadian Deprescribing Network. I love the name of that organization, the Canadian Deprescribing Network. We need an American Deprescribing Network. Well, she and her colleagues have developed evidence-based guidelines for, with, for withdrawing patients, mainly the elderly, from proton pump inhibitors, benzodiazepines, antipsychotics, and drugs to control plasma glucose levels. Um, they also right now are working on um, uh, guidelines for withdrawing patients from some of the drugs that are used to treat dementia because they are largely useless. And they're planning to work on guidelines for statins, bisphosphonates, and hypertension medications. So they plan to publish more data. Dr. Farrell says that in an ideal world, all prescribing guidelines would be accompanied by deprescribing guidelines, sending the clear message that people would not be put on these drugs for such an, such an extended period of time. She also says that um, attempts to withdraw elderly people from some or all of their drugs will be challenging because there are no mandates that their medications be reviewed with some degree of regularity or even guidelines about how such reviews should be conducted if people were to start doing them. Well, to this I'm going to add, the medical profession's track record in terms of changing things that need to be changed, dreadful, just dreadful. So if you have an elderly family member sitting around and waiting for one of the many doctors your family member may be seeing 
to suggest withdrawing from drugs is probably not going to happen. This is why the informed consumer um, business that we're in here becomes so important so that we, we help families every day learn how to look at medical literature and uh, uh, look at studies and evaluate whether or not drugs are warranted, procedures are warranted, etc. So it just uh, really amplifies and illuminates why it is so important for people to be informed consumers. All right, so on to the next topic. Most people know that exercise is good for them. The thing is they don't know how good it is for them. And then there is that issue of trying to get them to do it, right? But um, exercise is dose dependent. The more of it, the more you do, the better things get. And in fact, more exercise can help you live longer. Well, a research group decided to look at the benefits of exercise by comparing activity levels to the length of telomeres in subjects. Telomeres are nucleoprotein caps on the ends of chromosomes similar to the caps on the shoelaces on your shoes. Uh, telomeres shorten over time and the shortening of telomeres is a marker for both aging and cellular degeneration. Well, the researchers reported that adults who participated in higher levels of physical activity had an estimated biological aging advantage of nine years nine years of extra life based on the length of their telomeres over adults who were sedentary. The difference in biological aging between adults engaging in high levels of activity versus those engaging in moderate activity was 7.1 years and for the sedentary people they had an advantage of 8.8 .8 years. In other words, the more exercise you do, the longer you are going to live. This isn't the only study that has shown this result. Research funded by the National Cancer Institute involving data for over 650,000 adults also showed that exercise results in a longer life and also in a dose-dependent manner. Lead author Stephen Moore says, quote, our findings highlight the important contribution that physical activity in adulthood can make to longevity. Regular exercise extended the lives in every group we examined in our study, including normal weight, overweight, and obese people. Now this group was even able to calculate the expected return on exercise investment and determined that it was seven extra minutes of life for every minute you spend exercising. A seven to one return, I wish my investments paid off that well, <laughs> financial investments. Now let me tell you what this means. This means for every 206 minutes spent exercising, you get another day of life. Put another way, six 40 to 45 minute sessions each week can potentially extend your life for another day each week you do this activity. Now some of you may be thinking, another day, what difference does it make? But I want you to think about this. Think about yesterday. What happened? What did you do that was interesting? What did you eat that you enjoyed? What did you learn? Who did you act, interact with? What did you read? Did you enjoy playing with your cat or dog? Did you have fun in the sun? Did you smile when you looked at the flowers in your yard? Are you smiling right now as you think about the things you did yesterday? This is just one day. So think about how many days like that you would like to have. Well, exercise will give you more of those days. Now, this is another one of those knowing to do it and actually following through and doing it. They're two separate things, but um, maybe this will inspire some people to get outside. It's summertime here in Columbus. The sun's out, it's beautiful, it's hot, it's humid. It's a good day to go for walks and bike rides and runs and to lay in the sun and do yard work and all kinds of things. So get out there and move around. All right, that's all for today and all for the week. As usual, pass this on to anybody who you think might enjoy watching it, and I'll be back to you next week with more news.